Hi, Mauricio. Hello, how are you? So Hola. good to see you. So nice to see you. Hello, Max. Hello, Mauricio. Good to see hey, you. everyone. Hello. Scott. Hi. Oh Hi, Bennett. Good so to see you all. See all Hello, time. Bennett. <laughs> Hello. Nice to one. Time no see you. <laughs> oh, it's a lifetime. Like a, like a quarter of a century, something like that. <laughs> in in that time. Nice to see you. Hi, Candice. Hi, Candice. Juan, how are you? Uh, pretty good. Boulder and... Um, Aren't we all? Older, older and older. Just older and older. <laughs> it, it only has passed. Uh, we only have been in contact. All of us have been in contact for 25 years. So it's... it's it, time has passed. Yeah. Let's, let's say that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but every time I don't know if you guys ever attended your own high school or something college reunions, but when you do, you always start off exactly where you left off the last time you saw a person. So twenty five years ago, we're, we're continuing. There you <laughs> go. And we'll rapidly bring it to the to the present. We'll talk about a football game or something. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> I was trying to think what was going on in nineteen ninety seven. You know, oh, uh, that's a good question. Someone Google that. Yeah. <laughs> So many things obviously were different. Oh, wow. uh, too many. Yeah. Yeah. We had to find out what was the, the number one song and the number one movie. And the number... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> of Hello. those who are who are here, who is um, you just learned about Contacto for the first time and was curious enough to take a chance on us and join us, if I could. Or is everybody here uh, sort of so far a Contacto better? Mm. We're missing half of Tijuana. I'm not really sure if they're... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're missing quite a few people well, that signed don't up. We, don't we need to take into account Tijuana time? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, that's, that's true. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and, and how long is, is this opportunity for us to chat today? How long is this? We're officially given two hours. Oh, okay. We don't, we don't have to go that long, but okay. we, cannot, we cannot exceed it. Okay, then Lilia might make it in time. No, I'm kidding. She's on her way. <laughs> okay. Um, if you are curious, the, the agenda, if we can call it that, uh, this is, I, mean, I was just telling Nelly that this is not a lecture, you know, we're not teaching anything. It's sort of an informal gathering of a, a, a large, uh, good number of people that were uh, very involved with a particular event that to us was important. And um, we think that it has the effort that we put in back then has value, and I think that revisiting it and its goals and aspirations are worth looking at and potentially find a way to, uh, as the 25th anniversary comes next year, to look at what we were trying to accomplish back then. What what did we actually accomplish, and what can we? if we decide we have the energy and enthusiasm or at least half of what we had then uh, take on again and see if we cannot do it uh, maybe in, in a slightly different way that can ensure some consistency and some um, continuity. Mm -hmm. Although maybe formerly it hasn't had the continuity that maybe we envisioned, but I think without thinking about it, we all have grown and changed, hopefully for the better, for having had that experience. And, and uh, much of it, we don't, I, I found that I don't think about what, what happened, and, but it, it's part of me. And so maybe it's part of some of you also. And, and uh, Oh, it's definitely part of me because I married, <laughs> yeah, from Contacto. <laughs> and then we had two kids. So without Contacto, I would have just my family. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, proof that there, there was a uh, impact and in, in contact. Absolutely. Yeah, no, as you were saying, Max and, and others were saying earlier, I think it's just fascinating to have an opportunity 25 years later to see where all the contacto veterans, you know, uh, are, 
these days, both because we just want to know and re reconnect yeah. everyone. Yeah. And also as uh, glimpses of possible pathways to young people, right? Young designers yeah. who can see where they might go you know, into the future. And there's so many different ways and facets of life that are, you know, that are involved in all our journeys. I think that's just a, a fascinating opportunity because yeah. it's richer because it's binational, right? It's richer Absolutely. because there's so much more diversity in this conversation that we would normally have. If it was just San Diego designers or just Mexico designers. It would, it, it changes everything, you know, I love that. Yeah, and, and just also the fact that San Diego Design Week itself made such a, powerful effort to be inclusive and to say San Diego Tijuana is part of the, the, the tagline and everything's translated to Spanish. And so uh, as I say that, I realize that we're not translating this particular <laughs> event, uh, but you know, anybody here probably can jump in and help each other uh, to make sure that we understand. And, um, and maybe that's something that we can work on. And, and you know, I was reading that Zoom as a company acquired a company recently so that they could do that on the fly and it wow. won't be too long. And apparently Google is able to do it already. And one of the fascinating things about contact on the whole concept, because border, the border is such a incredible presence and reality is that look at this technology and now we are meeting sort of spontaneously because uh, I was a uh, terrible now, as I was then in getting things moving fast enough, and all of a sudden we are scrambling to get people signed up, and here we are. And so, uh, with enough effort and time and uh, organization, that makes it things that we could do um, with the technology, with Zoom, with uh, right. digital vehicles and tools. Um, it, it, you know, and who more? Uh, adequate to do it than creative people like us that, uh, you know, have look at innovative uh, ways of doing things as our daily approach to what we do. Um, oh, <laughs> so so um, I, I guess we can sort of start, I was gonna say that the, the, the event itself, the agenda, I was looking at the agenda from the actual event back then, and it's amazing how blurry that whole thing is to me. I was so involved, but I think I was looking at it like this, and I wasn't looking at the big picture. And there's so much of it that uh, I, I don't, it's not clear in my head in the agenda, the, the I, I'm realizing that there's no program that I can find or that I remember. <laughs> We did an event like that without a program. Uh, and so <laughs> maybe in the next one we'll have a program and that for that it will be <laughs> uh, if I remember have improvement. If I remember correctly, the idea was really to gather and to make contact, but yes. I don't think it was a, a real program or a gem. Uh, uh, and and isn't isn't that how this whole thing happens? With the, the, the meetings to plan this thing in themselves became the occasion. And right. They, I was looking at, I don't know if you guys know, but I kept a binder that in the story in the box and I discovered it recently. And that's sort of how we, Melian and I started discussing the fact that the 25th anniversary was coming. And because it, there was a date in this binder in this papers in the binder and uh, and then it just seemed like such a perfect time to revisit what we were doing uh, back then. But um, the, the, I found the agenda there. I found all these things that, I, so, that are, they just trigger so many emotions. And, and uh, my daughter was born that year, 1997. And I have papers that, that say uh, a fax. I have faxes that say, your daughter's so cute. Uh, it, it, I want to I wanna eat her with, you know, it's like, oh my God, I had a meeting in my house and I didn't remember. Uh, and so there were so many things that happened that were so special and so human, I think. Right. That, uh, we, to me, it's uh, so significant. Um, it, the agenda, again, it had 
played two videos. I forgot we had two videos, a San Diego video and a Tijuana video as an introduction. Yeah. And then we did some introductions somewhat formally. And then we had two panels, a student panel that had, uh, they had submitted a number of questions that of the things that were uh, of importance and uh, pertinent to their place they were at the time in the do. Some of them were really just about design, uh, universal issues. Some had to do with the culture and the situation uh, that we were in as two cultures that are, are tied in the hip and are in denial about it all the time. And then there was also a panel of professionals and we had topics that we discussed and then it was open to questions and, and such. And then we had a, an amazing art exhibition that uh, displayed the work of students and professionals all answering the prompt of the, their the concerns and their take on how two cultures come together and how they, uh, well, you, you, you all know how this is such an important part of our lives being here at the border and uh, our past, well, I should not get started with the uh, official policies and all of that, but uh, we, we'll get to that. So um, I feel like I want- can I, can I interrupt you for a second, Max? Absolutely, Scott. I'm actually kind of curious what your take is on that. And 25 years ago, I think maybe admittedly, I was a little bit more ignorant about um, border, you know, the, the political environment then, maybe it was as significant as it is today. I kind of doubt that. I wonder how you feel about 25 years later, what the circumstances are and, and how that does affect the design community on either side. Uh, well, from my, from my very uh, limited and uh, point of view, I, I, I think that we thought things were not great but we came to find out how bad they could get. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I, I think that in my wildest dreams, I couldn't have imagined what, has, what happened in the last, uh, the last uh, four years or four years ago. And to me, the biggest disappointment wasn't that people like, I'm gonna say his name, then Trump. Uh, I know they're <laughs> out there, to me was the to realize how many people were under the rocks or were in, or were not admitting to be to having those those uh, thoughts those ideologies mm -hmm. and so readily were able to join him and remain a huge force when you think about at the very least close to 50 percent of the country supports him wholeheartedly it's so depressing it's so and you know you like you know that there are factions, but at the end of the day, it's uh, uh, just totally disappointing. And what kind of also sorry to, to, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, I, it's it's you know I, I think it's that it's just simply there's I think that he doesn't even think or feel that way. He's just an opportunist. And he'll go in the direction that gains him the most of whatever he's looking his after power in this case. Uh, in, in but he's a total he's a vehicle to to some hidden ugly uh, despicable feelings that other people have been harboring. Do, do you think that the design community has been impacted in specific ways in Mexico because of? What's happened over I, the past several years? I'm not going to speak for for them, but I think economically things have been terrible, and in, in, and then the fact that the pandemic came on top of that. But I think opportunity in just the flow, the flow of people and the information and goodwill. It's it's. Uh, I I I would be interested in knowing how something like maquiladoras, who are have formal connection points and, and processes, how they have suffered or if they haven't, but yeah. I think people in general have had a terrible, uh, yeah, I don't think they're better off. And then 
the other, to me, it, it, I, I'm sure everybody's, the disappointing thing to me is that we, we were supposed to be the, the world leaders in the opposite thinking. And now we have emboldened all of this other tyrants in, in Brazil and Mexico and India, and, and they all have this uh, way of governing that it's taken us back years. But it also has crystallized how important it is for the rest of us to not sit around and wait you know, and be passive about how they, how they go about it. Yeah. That's my, my soapbox. Thank you for that. <laughs> A well said, for sure. Um, I, I, in the spirit of contacto, I'd love for everyone to go around and just introduce, reintroduce themselves to each other. Um, say where, you know, how are you doing now? If you want to uh, jump on Scott's question topic about how have you or your community been impacted, you know, over the last 25 years, by all means, put that in there. Otherwise, introduce yourselves and then maybe we can then go into these deep for conversations once we've gotten through reconnecting and recontact, you know, re recontacting uh, as, as, as we <laughs> get in. I dove right in, Ben. Sorry, right. dove right in. No, it's good stuff. Yeah. It's, That's this is where we're going to be. Right? We've got time. I feel like we should give. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm 25 years old or no, I don't have that much time left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I, I see you on, on your triathlons and all your. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're, you've got a lot of the rest of us, kind of out of us all. So. <laughs> all right. I want those. I want those arms. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, can we go around uh, the group yeah. here, or, or I'll do it. Can, can I ask if for Melinda to go next, since we're supposed to be co-hosting, and I haven't let her say say a word. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so I said I was 25 years ago, and I am now. I'm very thankful for her vision and her support and her mm -hmm. guidance and leadership. And, and uh, now I'll let you talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to those of you who we don't know here uh, this evening. We're so excited to have so many people interested in um, gathering with a bunch of the old bogeys who <laughs> are excited to see one another again. My name's Maylin Levine and I am an AIGA Hello, along with Candace Lopez, who's on here as well, and PG. And I had the good fortune at the moment in time, 1997, to be president of AIGA San Diego and to uh, work uh, shoulder to shoulder with Candace, Bennett, Scott, Max um, on the board at that time. And I feel like we had such an incredible group of people um, that were just truly um, uh, really close friends. And um, I think that in the spirit of Contacto, we were really just, I think all from both sides, we were all so curious about one another that the, uh, just for a little bit of an introduction for those who weren't involved then, um, we, we made an initial reach out to designers in the Tijuana area, which spread to all of Baja, fortunately. Um, and we started co-hosting meetings. So I think one of the first ones was at our office, I'm not sure, Visual Asylum. Um, and we had a certain number of people. And then the next one, I think the first one in Baja was at Lily and Eduardo's uh, space was that right? Was that the first one, Bennett? Do you remember on that I side? The so. Vida Alemán might have been the uh, first. Oh yes, it's, it's true. I can't remember who was first, but anyway, they uh, the photography the, studio. The, it was so magical that every time we announced another meeting and we bounced back and forth across the border, back when you could cross the border very, yeah, you know, so much easier. Um, but each time it just grew and grew and grew to the point where we had so many people coming to the gatherings that we realized, wow, look at all this energy and talent, enthusiasm. What are we gonna do? We gotta do something. And I think that's why we, we didn't really know what to, you know, where we were going. We were just on a journey together that was so inspiring and just getting to meet so many people and and literally make lifelong friendships and marriages and children as an outcome. 
um, I think is this is the spirit that this is contacto. Um, and so we, you know, developed a an idea to put on sort of a conference that we held down in um, Baja in Tijuana at Ibero um, that, you know, displayed all of the things that Max talked about earlier. So that's a little bit of a background story so people understand what it, what it is or was. And um, it would be this didn't make IGA for the um, leadership skills it gave all of us who've been involved uh, and enabled us to start the first ever international chapter, the Baja chapter of AIGA, which we were sad that um, AIGA organization, we were ahead of time. I think that we tried and did something that was way out front of where the organization was comfortable being. Um, but you know, I'm, pr I'm proud of this community for doing that and Juan for taking on that um, first presidency of the AIGA Baja chapter. So we, we did a lot of things in a short amount of time, I think together, and we are just interested to see if you all and others are interested in furthering the conversation and the get togethers and maybe putting on something next year in 2022 to really truly celebrate in a bigger way the 25th. And then hopefully maybe that leads to more. But we're trying not to do what we, you know, as in organization do, which is plan everything out, but rather let it happen like it did back in 1997. But who knows where we'll go if we're just open um, to getting on that bus together again and, and going for a ride somewhere. So anyway, why don't we hand it off to Jorge? <laughs> just here helping you out. I don't know. What, what do you want me to say? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> AIGA board. Uh, yes, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks uh, th for joining us today. My name is Jorge Naranjo. I'm currently on the board of AIJ San Diego, helping out with uh, Design for Good specifically with uh, diversity and inclusion. Uh, I'm from San Diego and Tijuana both, born in San Diego, but lived on both sides on my life. Uh, and around 1997, I was graduating high school, so I missed a lot of this, but I'm happy, <laughs> I'm happy to be a part of this. And uh, I heard a lot, of, uh, some, a, a lot of your names, but never got a chance to meet you. Um, I came to City College across the street over here and studied with Candice uh, uh, Graphic Design. And uh, very happy to uh, reconnect with uh, Maylin and uh, Maximo, who I've always wanted to, to meet and hang out with and help help them uh, with uh, put on these, these type of events. Uh, so uh, today I'm just gonna be facilitating, uh, helping out uh, whatever way I can. Uh, and uh, that's, that's a little bit about, my, about me. Well, that's the energy we're looking for. <laughs> so I, I guess is uh, at least in this arrangement, I'm the next one in the list. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, hi, in. I'm I'm Jose Manuel Cruz or Chepe. It's uh, really nice to see you. Uh, many familiar faces, although you may some of you may not uh, remember me. Um, I I took part of of Contacto. Uh, uh, living in Ensenada, I, I, I was uh, I just graduated then uh, from from school, and when I heard about this uh, project, immediately I, I got excited, and uh, for sure I, I attended that first meeting at Visual Asylum, and then uh, some others. Uh, and uh, Contacto is a, a it's a, an event and a project very dear to me. Uh, I remember at one of those meeting, I believe it was at San Antonio del Mar, probably, uh, between Playas de Tijuana and, and, and Rosarito, uh, I brought to the table this idea of the word contacto, splitting it in half, having a, an upper part uh, cleaner, uh, very uh, ordered, uh, uh, 
kind of, of, of arrangement and then the, the, the lower part, this chaotic, uh, uh, playful uh, personality for the word. And uh, they, everybody seemed to like the idea. And then the, 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 the development was further worked by Omar Chavira also in Ensenada. But uh, I, I still have my invitation here at hand. <laughs> I have the printed invitation here. Uh, Fantastic. And, well, this is the, the idea that uh, Omar uh, furthered after this first proposal. So it's, it's a, a, a very dear project to me. In fact, I, I still keep it as part of my portfolio, that first idea of the word contact to split in half. It, it, I, I, I can share it with you through the chat. So that, that's, that's me, it's really nice to see you. And I really hope that this reignites at some point in the very near future. Nice seeing you all. Nice to see you. Okay, I'll go next. I'm Amy Levine, Maylen's partner, sister in Visual Asylum, um, the current AIJY conference chair and um, would love to see you all at the Y coming up. So we miss our con more contacto is better. <laughs> Scott? Me? Your official greeting. I'm official. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm Scott, Scott Ramsey Design. Uh, been working in San Diego seems like my whole my whole life. I, I was on the board when we did Contacto 25 years ago, and and I will tell you this: I I always feel like and did back then, uh, like I was just trying to hang on to the coattails of Maylan and Amy and Bennett, and uh, just always inspired by everything that they were doing, and and the Contacto event I found particularly inspiring because. Um, I'm glad that May Lynn kind of revisited how that evolved because I was a little fuzzy on how that sort of came together. But the the result was truly inspiring, not only to see, you know, the designers on both sides of the border, but the connectivity. And and I just I just found that really compelling. And that's why I think I jumped to that question, uh, Maximo, about the time that has passed. And it just seems like the and we'll maybe circle back around to that later, but the the time that has passed has put a, a pretty significant focus on on the border, of course, and what's happening on either side and to put the design community right in that story. I find a very interesting kind of story to tell. Uh, but my my personal background, um, I've been on my own for many years. I was in house at the zoo. Maybe some of you know, they, I will tell you this little tidbit. They they've been a client for a long time and they had me come in on a fundraising project to design marketing materials for what's now called the Nikita Khan Rhino Rescue Center up at the Safari Park. Uh, it's where they're using kind of Jurassic Park DNA magic to bring back hopefully the northern white rhino that's now functionally extinct. So they brought me in for one month. They had to be on site and I thought, yeah, I could do that. And uh, sort of fell in love with everybody there. Very passionate. No one's making any money there, but just very passionate uh, conservationists. So I stayed there for two years, and uh, then ended up going back out on my own uh, again. And but I still I still work for them. Still love all things conservation. I'm all over that, and and so I'm happy to be helping out in that way too. So I've kind of gotten away from some of the other stuff, and certainly from this family. I uh, would love to be reconnected. No, no pun intended. <laughs> or intended absolutely intended <laughs> <laughs> that's my story Juan? hi everybody hi well, my name is Juan Madrigal and all of my life I've been jumping from one side to, to the other of the border I've been uh, sometimes working at the same time and with uh, practice in the U in San Diego and practice in Baja since I married eight years ago, I pretty much settled down and uh, stay here in Tijuana full time. Um, I'm, I ran studio 
3351, Studio 3351 in Tijuana, uh, which has been, has been going through several transformations in the 30 years that we've uh, been working together. We started as a Cadillac house. Um, I was the art director for like 20 years. And then things changed in Baja. Uh, Mario, I think, uh, will also attest to it that uh, we had to either move to Mexico City or change or, uh, or reinvent ourselves. So we, at the end, decided to re reinvent ourselves. So now uh, Studio 3351 convert, was converted into a, to a grip and lighting rental house. And we're starting, uh, we are also part of a group that it's um, par partnering with uh, uh, independent filmmakers in order to uh, finance, uh, distribute and produce films uh, all here. Uh, the plan is to film them all in Baja California. So that's uh, probably our next transformation or continuation of uh, what Studio 3351 is going to be in the next two years. So um, that's uh, fantastic. So that's uh, I started from being. Uh, it's uh, it, to be very curious enough how life evolves and we have to evolve with it. Uh, when in school, I had many opportunities to go into film and I always rejected them and ne it never interested to be in the film industry. And uh, because of necessity, I had to get into it. I loved it. I got involved and now I'm almost 80% uh, of my time is dedicated to, to, to that industry and 20% to design. So, so it's, uh, that's pretty much what I'm doing nowadays. That's fantastic. Well, could you revisit briefly the fact that you were the first president of the AIGA chapter? This sort of uh, mm -hmm. yes. Well, part uh, of your experience. Let me put the context a little bit. I think in 1997, uh, the the entire NAFTA treaty was starting to have results in Mexico. I think part of the sub context of what was going on is that uh, the, the NAFTA treaty was about eight, seven, uh, nine years old then, and uh, it was starting to have an impact. So the economy of Mexico was growing, uh, opportunities particularly in Baja for designers and for uh, other ad agencies and architecture were kind of flourishing during that time. So there was this, huge enthusiasm for design and schools were, uh, there were several schools producing designers, designers, designers. So, uh, and a lot of talent actually uh, came out, came, came about during that period. So uh, it was uh, when uh, the first contact of meetings started to be, to, to, it started to evolve or it started to be in, uh, realized uh, there was this huge enthusiasm, especially from students and uh, some professionals, to start to be part of the IGA. Unfortunately, um, I think my assessment well, uh, 25 years ago um, is that uh, we were too ambitious and we tried to do many things. Uh, we tried to do pretty much what San Diego was doing with very limited resources and with, uh, with a small group of people. Everybody was very enthusiastic and very dedicated and devoted, but it got to a point that after our first uh, uh, conference, uh, it, it pretty much burned, burned us up and created uh, other conflicts that we, that we just couldn't resolve. But, uh, but I think uh, the idea has always has has, is, are there. Uh, I know Tijuana is very active in the creative uh, mornings um, uh, program. So I think um, uh, uh, it's an idea that can be explored and brought back, uh, in my opinion, at least. 
Yeah, I think I think that creative Mexico Mexicans are so creative that whether they're doing graphic design or whatever other form of expression, they need to. You know, we need that's what we need to remember, in that uh, supporting this creative endeavor, whatever they are, uh, is part of what I think our mission was when we started doing this, because it's a unifying language. Sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. It's my time. Bennett and Lou. Is that us? Oh, we're, oh, we're eager to hear from Mauricio and others. <laughs> <before we. laughs> yeah. Okay, here I am. It's very <laughs> nice to see Mauricio. you again, Mauricio Cano. And what I most remember it was when when we used to go to the White Conference at the right at the beginning. Well, for us, our nineteen. 1997 or 1996 or 1995 I don't remember exactly but I, I really remember very well those those meetings with you and trying to to meet people new people and we were so very we were thrilled to be there because we were hanging out with big leagues <laughs> you know <laughs> we were so so happy and after that when we we could uh, get each other in order to to do the AIGA chapter in Baja California. It was also very nice to to be with all, for example, at Visual Asylum with Joel. I remember Joel very well. I remember all of you, obviously. Uh, but I think that um, the most important thing here is that uh, we could we try to do a little bit like the thing do you do over there in Mexico or in Tijuana? Like Juanito said, it was a little bit difficult or more difficult for us because you know the, the budget or the, the people sometimes it wasn't very enthusiastic. Not, not, be, not many people wasn't very enthusiastic as our group, but we were very happy to, to meet, for example, Maximo. Uh, we worked a little bit together with Mario and mm -hmm. I and um, Candice, for example, or the great, um, her husband. <laughs> Rafael. Rafael, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, I think that this time or seeing you through this platform, it's incredible. You know, we, we don't need to cross the border even when mm -hmm. we can't, you know, we can cross the border. <laughs> But we are crossing the border right now, the other the other way. So well, nowadays I'm working at uh, video production. Actually, uh, I'm doing most motion graphics more than graphic design. Well, actually, I do graphic design, but most of that is graphic uh, motion graphics. And actually, I remember very well when I met Joel, he told me, okay, if you learn me how to use the Macromedia Director, I will let, uh, teach you how to use After Effects. <laughs> and since then, I'm, I'm still working on that program. I'm very happy about that. And here I am, happy to be, or happy to hear, or happy to see you, and trying to support, so, or trying to to be better through these uh, meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mao. Okay, who's next? Sonia. Candice. <laughs> Candice. Um, okay, hey everybody. It is so good to see some old faces and familiar ones. Um, I'm Candice, I'm married to an illustrator, Rafa, from Mexico City, who was part of Contacto, but he's on a deadline right now. <laughs> um, and we live part-time in San Miguel de Allende. Um, and I was so excited to be part of the original Contacto. The friendships we made, the joy, um, the ideas, and the memorable taco stands we went to. Um, so many great things that I remember. 
um, hanging out together at the Y conference, like Mauricio said, that was really, really great. Um, as a teacher, I feel still very lucky to work with students at City who are from both sides of the border, people like Jorge. And so many things inspired us at the time. Like I remember particularly for me, Nortec design and music, you know, was really, really inspiring. Um, those ideas. And when I think about the issues that connect us right now, things like climate change, education, COVID, migration, um, I think it's going to take a lot of creativity to meet these challenges. And I'm kind of personally, as an educator, hoping that we can involve a new generation maybe create groups at design programs in Mexico and San Diego that are interested just like we were originally and kind of see where the future takes us. Like, how can we reignite that flame? That's what I'm interested in. Great, how about Sonia? Hi, uh, buenas tardes a todos. Uh, it's so nice to um, see you all, I guess. Uh, this is the first time that I'm seeing a lot of people. Uh, it's the second time that I'm seeing a few of you, and it will be a little bit more often that I see other people. So, hi, <laughs> my name is Sonia Lopez, and I'm a gravity center here in San Diego. I work at the Peace Science Center in Mobile Park. I've been there for close to 20 years. I'm old enough to drink now, so, you know. <laughs> Almost. Um, yeah, so I love uh, listening to all of you uh, talk about how you uh, started, you contacted, right, uh, the U.S. and Mexico uh, designers and see how, what, and what you can do uh, with the both of you and uh, issues from the borders. And I, I mean, it, it, it is amazing. Um, I have never participated in a group by national per se, even though I am Mexican originally, uh, I have always, you know, that education here was in the US. So it, this is brand new for me, like listening to all of this in Spanish, you know, like all the struggles that uh, Mexican designers are going through. It's very, very different um, to listen to. So thank you for uh, having me here. And I make me feel like I belong somewhere. So thank you for that. Uh, it, it, it's just amazing to listen to, to everyone. And I know that um, Maximo was talking about having uh, lived through the Trump era and all of those things happening. Uh, my only question would be, how do you feel about the racism in Mexico, especially and not in contrast with the US racism because they're a little bit different and how are you hoping to make a, an impact on that, on, on Mexican racism and colorism, classism, um, any of those things. Uh, sometimes I feel like we are fast at bashing somebody else's racism, but we don't, we forget to look into what happens and what we do with, with each other. And Mexico is, is a very racist country, we all know that, but how can we as designers, as communication people, how can we start looking into those things? Um, that would be great to know. And if you have any ideas, how can we help? So, thank you. You want me to? Nice to see you. Um, I think that the answer is, uh, in the, as Candice mentioned, it's on the next generation. Uh, not that we don't have any responsibility, of course we do, but my, my daughters are teaching me more than I could ever teach them about how to behave. And uh, it, even, it makes me emotional because uh, it's been such a journey, uh, especially the last 10 years uh, uh, of learning how to, uh, but the things that we do so casually as, as uh, men, as Mexicans, as whatever our, our bit of privilege that we enjoy and of being aware of how that affects other people. And in Mexico, it's no different than uh, what, you know, it's easy for us to uh, feel outrage at the abuses or perceived abuses that we suffer. And they're not perceived, but uh, we have to look at ourselves, of course. 
And so, yeah, there's a huge responsibility uh, in being communicators to not assume. Uh, I, I was looking at some of the work that we did for the exhibition and the quotes are, man does this, man does that. Uh, it, it, and to lots of it's men, it's not, it's, it's not inclusive. It starts from the, from, from the, the very simple uh, to, to such huge wide uh, issues. So I am learning and I am uh, hopefully absorbing some of that and, and uh, practicing it. And uh, I, I look at you, Sonia, to teach me and hopefully I'll support you and we will support you and, and, and uh, to at least not get in the way. And I think that if there's any hope, uh, it's the next generations that they're there. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that I think going back to the Trump regime that gives me, gives me a lot of hope that the youth, the young people do not subscribe to such bias, such prejudice, such uh, evil. And um, what they're doing right now is trying to change the rules so that they can continue as long as they can, uh, imposing those beliefs and feelings on the rest of us. And, and I think that uh, it's inevitable that they are not going to prevail, but they're desperately doing everything in their power to, to elong elongate that time that they remain in that position. And so, that's a little bit of what I think. It's not uh, all well put together, but uh, I think that, that that's certainly something that we need to keep uh, present moving forward. So contact them in so many different ways. And so, uh, not just borders, but gen, I don't even, you know, the, the vocabulary that my daughters use, I, I, I can't uh, dominate it, but it's something that it, it, it's uh, sexuality, uh, it, it, there's so many different permutations that I am, I'm struggling with that, but uh, I, I assure you I'm trying to, to stay with it and, and learn and implement. Thank you for bringing it up. Okay, anyone else to introduce yourself? Let's just have you jump in. I see faces I am not fully recognized. Luis, Rachel, please. Oh, shit. Hi, sorry, I wasn't <laughs> expecting to be on camera, but um, <laughs> my name is Rachel. Um, I'm a student at San Diego City College. Um, I'd, I uh, joined this, this seminar because um, I wanted to learn more about how design pertains to, or how it can help um, um, the San Diego and Tijuana culture. Um, I'm actually, I grew up in Ohio, but I've lived in San Diego for 10 years. So um, I know that it, the San Diego Tijuana relationship is really important. And I, I just wanted to learn more about it and like the design and as far as, as design goes. And I wanted to meet all you lovely people. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Nice meeting Thank you guys. Luis? Uh, yes, hello everybody. <clears throat> About three weeks ago, I think Joanna, Joanna Mora, sent me an email telling me if I wanted to like uh, come to a meeting, a Zoom meeting about the event of Contacto. And I answered her, uh, Joanna, I don't think I was part of Contacto. I remember it, but I don't think I was <laughs> part of it. And then she sent me a photo of me holding a ladder for something, <laughs> picking something up. Say, so, oh, okay, all right, maybe I was there, I think so. Well, like uh, the days in, at university, some, some of them are kind of blurry, so. Yes. Why. But I do remember the influence and the, the inspiration I got from the Y conferences. That was really, really inspiring. So, and seeing a lot of people and a, a lot of work over there, it was re very inspiring. Um, we're missing uh, Joanna. What happened? Huh? Yeah, we're missing her. her. Yeah. She's she was probably supposed doing to be something. here. She needs to clean or something, clean or something like <laughs> that. But anyway, uh, yes, I continued to work in graphic design, made a, a brand over here in Tijuana called Tequi. That's what they used to call me, Tequi. And then I fell in love with somebody that lived in Switzerland. So I moved over there. Uh, I was over there for eight years. 
I had a, I have a boy and a girl, seven and four. And in the contract with my wife, it was settled that we were gonna come back here to Tijuana to live for two years. So we arrived here last year in January. I said, yeah, I had all these plans. Uh -huh. And then COVID hit, so all the plans are still in pause. And one of them was that I was over there in Switzerland. I found out about a process called nonviolent communication. Oh, and here's my daughter. Hola. So I found out about, find out about that process. So I'm mostly dedicated to that process right now. I use design to like help me out to like uh, make the, commun the visual communication a little bit easier when I do uh, facilitate it. So right now I'm here like maybe I can get some contacts or we can work things out or maybe I can promote it through you guys like that process that's called put it in the chat we'd be interested to see what to do is to put, put some information in the chat if you can and we'll stay connected we'll yeah yeah for sure I'll still I'll still come and like uh, snoop around and everything hold a ladder or something but for <laughs> sure I'll, I'll be here and uh, yeah so thank you very much and yeah I continue to be inspired by 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 the work of well, people like you all right I'll be here thank you I live in Tijuana. Yeah. Hey, Luis, Luis. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember you, man. I think I have one of your t-shirts. That's the, the little elephant. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I have that, man. I ah, cool, that. man. So I'm, I'm my supporter. <laughs> so nice to see you, man. Uh, likewise, thank you for buying a t-shirt. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, okay, thank you. Don Hollis, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> I'm sorry for being <laughs> late. Um, we had a meeting that ran into this one, but hello, everyone. It's just nice to see old familiar faces. It's been too long. Hey, Hi, um, Don Hollis. For those of you who haven't met me, um, I have a design studio since back before the last contacto here in San Diego, and and we've all been you know inspiring one another and collaborating and working together and and lifting each other up. Know, over all these years um, to to make our, our community and our region a better place. So I just wanted to listen in and and reconnect with everybody. Welcome. Bennett, are you ready to go now? Sure. Lily, why don't you yeah. go first? Of course. Hi, I'm Lilia PG. Um, I'm an architect by training, but I do interior design projects now through um, with Bennett, Bennett PG Design. And um, Contacto obviously was life-changing for me because uh, that's where I met Bennett. <laughs> and um, it's great to see everybody, to reconnect and uh, very excited for what's next. Always big supporters of Bennett and I of anything that has to do with uh, crossing the border, uh, Tijuana, San Diego relationships, uh, very important for us and for our families. So very excited to be here today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, Lili, your family, we cross the border every week, pretty much, even, uh, even during these times, uh, we, we make it a priority. Uh, Lili and I, Lili in particular, uh, <laughs> made the grand effort of uh, sending our kids to school in Tijuana, for six years, since they were two years old, before we brought them to school in the United States. So they would know they're Mexican, that they would know they're binational, and because they can learn to be American later. But first, really, really know in your heart of hearts that your first language is Spanish, Mexican Spanish, and that your, your heart belongs, right, to, to both nations um, deeply. Um, and so all their teachers, all their friends, everybody, their cousins, everything, you know, for the first six years of their life, uh, was in Tijuana and they still see their, those friends, those cousins on a weekly basis to this day. So that's forever. And I can't um, say how uh, blessed I am that Lily brings that to our, to our children. And, uh, you know, there's, we're, we're right at the border, you know, it's, it's a treasure uh, to, to, to connect and to meet people that are both like us and yet unique in their own special ways that we can discover and uh, the richest 
part of this discovery to me is is Mexico, right? That's why that's why we stay in San Diego our whole lives, and to uh, and to not ever uh, miss every opportunity to discover. Um, uh, Rachel was saying something about learning, you know, what it means to to live and be really connected to the border and all its issues and and, and its creativity and its potential. Um, you know, this contacto is going to give us that opportunity to re to re exhibit and show the amazing talent of our Mexican designer friends, um, and to have and uh, maybe even a more global way because we can don't do it not just physically now we can really do it virtually, which we couldn't do before, right? We can archive and show it and distribute it worldwide so the world can know the magnificence of the talent that's on on both sides of the border uh, because it is just. How can I put it? It's not branded well. <laughs> We're branders, but we don't brand it well. And we need to do our part, right? To, to change the message and to change the uh, perception of creativity because it's mm -hmm. profound, really. We all know that it's profound, but you only know that once you get into it and discover it and make the effort. Having said that, you know, Lily pretty much is the company Bennett PG Design now. I got recruited seven years ago to be the vice president of a large nonprofit organization called the Jacob Center. I did that nonprofit work, community building type of direct work for almost six years. And then last year, I was recruited to be the chief innovation officer for three companies. So I really serve different hats now. One is um, global electric transport. Um, it's literally where we design our own infrastructure and buses, electric buses, um, that's going to be around the world. But we've already established 200 of them in the Philippines, in Metro Manila. And we have contracts in Malaysia, in, in, in Kenya, and I'm gonna work, I'm working on one in, in, in central Mexico to bring the electric buses there. But we own the whole infrastructure. We released the app in last November. In one month, we had over 800,000 subscribers, people who want to use that the electric buses, because it's just the way to go to eliminate our the pollution and, and uh and the the just the horrible transportation, public transportation systems in most of our developing urban centers of big cities. Um, I also am the chief innovation officer of something called the Filipino School. So it used to be a real school. Lily designed it seven years ago, uh, but it's no longer a school. It's now an edutainment a studio and center where we're creating our own films and documentaries about Filipino culture. And so we have a movie on Amazon Prime Video now called Filgrimage. Um, and we are, in, we are that's, that's already out. And then we're uh, producing a, a documentary history series, six part series on the, on the uh, history of Filipino heroes. And in parallel, we have another group of Marvel illustrators of Filipino descent. And we're creating our own Filipino uh, superhero movie uh, because you know what? Black Panther just opened our eyes to what you know, uh, underrepresented communities could potentially do. But when we were talking at the school, we said, but no one has ever done that for our culture. No one even, we're so under the radar, <laughs> right? How do we get on the radar? And again, this is a conversation for all of us, for other, all our underrepresented voices. So because it's the Filipino school, we are responsible for choosing to do it for the Filipinos, for all the Filipinos, mm -hmm. you know, the two and a half million Filipinos in the United States and the 120 million Filipinos uh, in the Philippines and around the world we have accepted the challenge of being the voice for all of them and to tell a new story and to bring it to the world stage uh, via our own animation uh, superhero movie. So that's what we're working on. Awesome. Uh, okay. Let's see, Marisa and uh, who else is, who hasn't had a chance to speak yet? I guess Marisa, huh? <laughs> Hi, um, I am actually brand new to San Diego. I moved here not that long ago to take on the role of executive director of an organization called CODA, which is an art and design <clears throat> education organization that works in the K-12 space. And um, prior to moving to California, I was heavily involved in Design Week in AIGA and AIAA on the programming and professional development side. So when I got here and I saw that Design Week was happening, I was very excited to 
register for as many events and um, attend as many things as possible. And I will say this conversation has been fascinating in the way that this morning I was listening to the group that was talking about the world design competition and the <clears throat> quest to be like the first binational um, uh, application and winner of Design Week. And listening to you guys talk about Contacto gives that so much humanity and so much context and so much history. It makes so much sense that this would be like a hub for a binational design community. So thank you for providing all that context and making so much more sense of why this should be the world design capital and why this um, initiative and you guys as a community are so important to making that happen. So thank you for welcoming me. Lovely to see you all and uh, thanks. Yeah. Well, and, and it's, uh, not a Marisa, it's not a coincidence because Maylid at the AB and specifically Maylid as, as chair head, she's the one who created and founded and led the whole world design capital bid so she's the one who actually got that whole thing going <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. <laughs> awesome work on yeah yeah and i will say um that the way world design capital has uh, evolved and is presented is thanks um to don hollis and his team at hollis and uh, culture um he developed a very strong brand identity for us and it served as well. So we're a uh, compete with Moscow, uh, Russia to become the 2024 world design capital. So very exciting. We know in the next or so. Team effort and we appreciate the opportunity, especially getting to, again, all work together like, like we did with Contacto. So. Awesome. Does that uh, cover everybody? Uh, everybody? That's every wow. So it's this is it's just so cool because it's taken its own form, and that's sort of what I think we wanted and I to just uh, I think what drives the group is what we do. And, uh, I almost feel like we should. Uh, I guess first of all, I also I, I I'm assuming that people know me and that I I, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Maximo Escobedo, and I was happily recruited by Bennett PG in 1996 or seven to join the AIGA board, which just was so dynamic and uh, so uh, exciting at that time. And I was happy to be welcomed. I was working at a semiconductor company uh, six years. Uh, and um, I had always, uh, I was in-house at a tech company and I just wanted to be part of the creative community outside of my uh, big corporation which took care of me nicely but it was not enough and uh, so I think joining the IGA board was such a great thing for me in my life just to open up all of those uh, windows and uh, be able to enjoy the friendships and relationships that we keep since then. Uh, and uh, I don't know if this is pertinent to what, Mar uh, what Mauricio was saying, but I, I thinking of how this whole thing started with Contacto, uh, it, um, somebody from Mexico, from Tijuana, I remember, came and told us that they wanted to meet us. They wanted, I don't think it, it was us. I, I think somebody told us, do you guys want to gather? They wasn't going to meet. And we went to, I remember, I think an old town lunch or dinner and, we started talking and it was just like uh, six, eight people. I don't know. It, and uh, of course, I was super excited. I was born in Mexico and grew up in Tijuana and I came here at 15 and and uh, I never knew that I could make a living doing art. I was told by my parents that I couldn't. And then graphic design existed here and I saw it in a catalog and I said, that's for me. And all of my brothers are engineers, but I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to do math. And um, and I found <laughs> like-minded people. And I do math now, but uh, it's not what I do most of the time. And, and so it was just such a, a good place for me to find this voice. I, w I wanted to do cartooning, I wanted to do comics, I wanted to do animation. Uh, and, uh, but the, we're so close-knit Mexicans and Bennett knows this. So Amy, uh, I mean, uh, Lily doesn't have a choice. She has to go every Sunday. Or, or else, 
you know, and so it just, I could not leave my home. So I had to make my, my way here in San Diego State and uh, uh, change my major the day I find out that graphic design existed. And, uh, uh, and so hungry, hungry for reconnection with my culture, with my people. And it was uh, such, a, such a blessing to, to, to be there. And so somehow we agreed that we would start an international relations committee or group. Uh, and uh, I took on that uh, and it was such an exciting time. And uh, the support of the board to, to start this sort of formalizing what was hard to formalize and this let it happen. And like we were saying, the meetings were the events. The, the, and I was also reviewing those notes. And at some point, unfortunately, somebody came to the conclusion that we had to pare them down because we weren't getting anything done. We were having too much fun. And so there wasn't any planning, any uh, the, the things that needed to be accomplished by the committees uh, weren't happening. We were just enjoying each other too, too much. And so that's what an interesting thing about how we move forward. So, uh, it's, uh, that's how it came to be whittled down. That's, we just had to add st uh, structure. And so maybe there's a, a creative way of doing both. But uh, again, I, um, I've been in design since 1987 uh, and I'm, um, I've worked in, through Contacto, I met Terry Mastin whose name I have forgotten so cruelly, sadly, and, and who was on the board or was, I think she was on the board she of was. AIG. Yeah. And she uh, was working at Muriel Graphical and we worked together, putting together Contacto and she said, you know what, I'm going to talk to Ron and I think that you will be a good fit because I'm leaving. And she moved on and told Ron about me and I worked at Muriel Graphical and it was some of the best times of my life. And, and so this is what, the idea is that they would ask for people. Yeah. And, uh, and so just, I don't know, good things. So um, we want to continue good things. Uh, do you, what, we have two videos that we dug up. I dug up a VHS tape of the two videos that were produced for Contacto for the day of the event. And we got to uh, see those. So we have them and we can play them. And we also have a treasure trove of amazing art that we all created. Uh, and I just had, had them, I found them in transparency form. I had a photographer, a uh, friend of mine who was doing work for me back in 19, I was still at Brook Tree. And he, we, we had credit and I said, use the credit that we have to take these photos. And he went to the breakdown of the AIGA, the white conference, uh, exhibition, he went to the breakdown and before everybody, everything was gone and packed, he took photos of things that were leaning on the walls. And my God, I'm glad he did. I have no idea where, I think everybody who had manageable pieces came and got theirs. And I don't know what happened to the big pieces. Uh, eventually, uh, I know that we had things in storage, but I don't know how long they could have been kept in storage. And I have no idea what the destination of many of those pieces <laughs> were. But, um, so we have images and I think they're as important and as relevant today as they were the, the day they were done. And uh, that's what validates, I think, what we, what we were doing and what we continue to do. We as artists and creatives are a filter for culture and a interpreter of culture and we need to be playing that role. Uh, and so, we can look at the videos, we can look at the images. I don't know if we're gonna run out of time. I think that uh, if you want to do that, I'll ask what to play the videos. And we just gotta make sure that we stay in touch and, and not put any pressure on anybody to relive the, their efforts. And, but I think that this is a nice beginning to reconnect and stay in touch and maybe uh, find out uh, who else we can uh, entrap, entrap into this many things that hey max i i'm i'm all for what you just said about starting just having too much fun first and then we'll figure out what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay you want to play with you yeah let me give it a shot over here let's 
see. Is it is it showing? Yeah. Full screen. Big enough. Yes, full screen. There you go. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't added anything, okay? That's what yeah. Max gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it starts. Any time, any any moment now. There we go. My students and now my family come from both sides of the border and there's so many things that I love about Mexico and about the United States. It's true there are a lot of things that divide us like language, culture, history, economy, and physically there's that fence. But when I think about what the fence really is to me, I, I think it's fear and it's stereotypes and those can be broken down because really we wake up each day in San Diego and in Baja to the same sun. And we share so many things, especially a common passion for design. You see the influence of Mexico everywhere, from culture to music to colors and shapes. It's, it's everywhere. There's so many things in so many places here in San Diego, especially here at this school. I don't know why. I mean, I've been to other schools in this city, but at this school, there's so much diversity that affects me a lot. I don't think it does, which is kind of uh, surprising that it doesn't have more of that. So, so that's why this contact, I think, is so cool. It has, and having somebody who's from Mexico on our staff has really brought, I think, more um, uh, real impact to how Work in Mexico now, and I feel through this whole thing much more of a connection than a separation because of the use of color in Mexico. They're not afraid of color. I think uh, the cultural diversity here has a lot to do with it, and I think uh, as designers, we uh, work real hard to get as many influences as we can from as many vast and diverse areas as we can. I think that's one of the big things that um, affects my work here in San Diego. Just the fact that it's, uh, you know, it's so close, it's half hour away, and it's a different culture, you know? It's just like we go over there, and it's all the different sensations, uh, the taste, you know, everything, the smell, the, the look, everything's different, you know? And it's nice to get the, to shake up a little bit and get a little bit of a, a different cultural aspect on it. You know, it's, just, it's a refresher. <laughs> I like communicating with people beyond words, you know. I don't speak very well um, in Spanish, but I always seem to have that connection with people. I love Mexico. It's, it's, it's my country, it's my place, it's where all my friends are. Um, I really get inspired in Mexico, and I'm in a very privileged situation because not only uh, I know that whenever I've traveled, it's, it's totally impacted how I design, how I do things. You know, any exposure to anything different than outside the world you know, just makes it better. If you're a designer and you're not pushing the envelope and you're transcending borders, then I think you're doing not only yourself, but your clients an injustice. And, uh, our society is changing so rapidly that I think um, you have to do a lot of work and, and push your envelope personally to just keep up with it, uh, let alone transcend the actual borders. So, yeah, I think for sure designers need to transcend whatever their borders are, personally, professionally, uh, all of it. 
IT as you can see in boards and, and graphic design will only help you know establish this idea because I think different colors have different icons for different with different meanings. So I think it is it will be really hard for somebody to impose somebody's own style or somebody's outlook on design in a foreign country. So I think <laughs> It's great. Um, it's just a really good city with a lot of places, a lot of different places, and then we just have access to Tijuana right across the border, and we can get like a different view of life and culture and everything in general. Um, I think it's it's a really nice city where we're located. Well, you know, San Diego is not really the cultural uh, mecca that maybe New York or even LA is, you know. But the weather that we have and the ability to get out of the studio and do other things, you know, uh, I'm like I, I like to like a mountain bike or a surf and. Um, you know, when you get out there, I mean, you're just exposing yourself to a different environment. You get, you take clues from nature, and um, I, I, sometimes I'll sit out there and get ideas just thinking, that, you know, in the water. It's just getting out of here and getting into a different environment. Because I grew up here, um, I am connected to the city. And having had the opportunity to meet all 38 chapter presidents of the AIGA, I know for a fact that we are one of the friendliest, closest-knit design communities in the country. So the camaraderie, the people, is clearly what makes San Diego special to me. When visual messages are communicated well, they don't really need a specified language. If I can show you a picture that shows an action, the words aren't really as important. So no matter what country you come from, you can still understand. Graphic designers are just as the wind. Wind blows and we can have any borders and barriers. Yeah, the world is definitely getting smaller, not only with the web, but uh, certainly with design. You can look at like a design publication that was produced in Europe or Asia or the United States, and they're all looking pretty similar. But mm. it's those little minor differences that make up the, the, the different uh, nuances in the society. You know, I could trade a pie with the guys down in Mexico, and we're all using pork or whatever it is. So it is getting smaller in that sense. designers, there's actually, uh, and seeing their talent and their spaces and how they live and how they work, it's really, it's like I never even thought about them. And so now that I actually know these people, it, it just seems, it's really inviting. Uh, the blunder guy. Oh. I have no idea who that was. There were a couple of students, I believe, that two or three. That, were they students? Mm-hmm. A few, yeah. They were definitely very involved. But he was put together by Kansas, uh, Kansas students, I believe. A lot of it, yeah. So great. Uh, Jorge, since the other one is just uh, short of two minutes, why don't we run it too, and then we can talk. That, that was it. That's that was it. We have, yeah. Oh, <laughs> we don't, okay. We don't have two videos. We have I, one video. I have it. I have it. Let me... Um, Oh, interesting. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. And so Keep talking see, about that. Much, I'm sorry. I'm just saying, seeing so much of San Diego that has changed so much as well. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> we, we haven't no, changed. Looks like, yeah, the downtown <laughs> looks the 60s, doesn't it? Yeah. Tijuana is also unrecognizable. It has changed so much here around where the studio is and where I live. It's high rises all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, okay, the skyline so is transforming. Juan, so you're in Tijuana as well? I'm yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in Tijuana. It is in Tijuana. But uh, Mexico City, I was mistaken. No, I'm not Tijuana. Right. Good to know, man. OK, so I think. Uh, no, that's not what I want. Mm -hmm. Quick time. It's going to be not a slick, but here's the other one. Lo que pasa todo el tiempo en el 
fondo de las cosas de la realidad, pues es estar aquí. Lo cruel de la vida. Oye, no hay garraperos, oiga. La realidad es como, hoy un trancazo que te da. Un espacio es el infinito. Siempre dejar un espacio para, para ciertas cosas nuevas que pueden venir. Chitados en el mundo. Pues un lugar que ocupamos. <risa> Cuando dos cosas se unen. Relacionarse. Pues las amistades, pues. La relación que llevan dos o tres o más personas. <risa> They really interviewed random people, not like not here designers. that they interviewed designers. Actual designers. <laughs> all this <laughs> there you are very cool <laughs> where where and how did we use that so apparently the, the notes say that we showed those two videos at the beginning of the conference and then after the break we played them again so there were two panels the way that i remember it, it, it maybe it was both there was this old tv that uh, was put in the gallery and they uh, put a VHS player near it and they played this uh, as part of, at least I, what I remember the Tijuana slide was sort of their entry, a certain group of people's entry to the exhibit. Uh, unless Mauricio remembers things differently, I think Mauricio might have been involved with it before Mario. Do you remember Mauricio? Blurry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really don't remember very well that part because I, I wasn't studied at that time. I, I actually already, um, I was working already, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I remember that, uh, that contact meeting, but uh, I wasn't involved, really involved in the project, okay. I, I remember. I That's do remember I uh, your, your brother and uh, Fritz Torres, and Lady uh, Juanos, also by Fritz Torres, and uh, Victor Balcázar, who, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, yes, Victor Balcázar. He, he did the editing for Candace's video as well. So he was doing truly collaborating, contact on both sides of the border, helping both sides. So, yeah. I, 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 have, I worked with Victor many times over the years since, and, and I just, wow, I have stumbled. It, it's, just uh, so serendipity, I've worked with him at uh, uh, with clients that uh, bring him in, and I have brought him in. It's just uh, he's been a, a presence as a photographer and a video videographer in my professional life. Uh, and so, oh my God, did you see that? It was there's so much to talk about, and, and you know, we turned six twenty six. We don't, we haven't shown the images. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about how we move forward. Yeah, can you see the images? Okay, so I'm gonna play Maybe those. it helps. Go ahead. Maybe it helps jog the memory. Yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, there's gonna be so much to talk about, so we have to do this again. Uh, so yeah. we have to, the, to tell the powers that be, that be that we need San Diego Design Month so we can <laughs> one week won't do it but uh, we'll find our way to connect as we as we tend to do uh, let me see if i can put this uh... what i most remember is uh, the double sentido uh, congress yeah but it was in uh, 2000 if i don't remember back 2000 it was uh... Let me see if I have that. Uh... Yeah, I think yes, yes, I believe it was 2000. In Ensenada? Mm -hmm. Yes. I believe it was 2000. Okay, so before I play this. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still have the T-shirt. Oops, I still nope. have the T-shirt too, and uh, some uh, tequila cool. shot yeah. glass. So we're gonna have to get uh, Joanna to to uh, tell her side of the story. Yeah, so uh, I have this too. There and, it is. And so the dates should be somewhere there. So we claim to know what we're doing, and, and they put a program together, and I didn't. So I guess uh, they have a few things to teach us. Um, I'm gonna run the images. And um, I, I, I there's, a, there's a, a smart way to do this, and obviously this isn't, but uh, we have so many commands in front of, see command L, who knows, window. I'm supposed to do this for a living. Mm-hmm. I didn't do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna do. What do you see now? Oh, it's being slow. Do you see that? Do you see a slide? Yeah. Okay. And you can hear me. So this is supposed to be the official opening slide of the event, which comes three quarters of the way into it. And uh, for lack of a better, you know, there should be so many names in there, but uh, th- that's what the template had going for. So I put that uh, there. And um, this is sort of a you to the video. And what I did, I said, capture the questions because I think it would be important to, to going forward to sort of know specifically capture what the concerns that we're playing with uh, looking at. And, um, and this beautiful quotes at the end of the video. Then there was the interesting take on this the one aside where I think it's just the same concerns without thinking of any particular group. It's uh, just very universal issue that people in the street were asked to find about and I thought that was so beautiful. And uh, so obviously with enough time, we can have subtitles and translations provided for these images and you think it's they really enjoyable. Here's that wall. Uh, and then these images are in the website. I just thought uh, this gives us a sense of what we were all trying to accomplish and trying to decide what wow. people. And this is David Aleman's uh, studio. And uh, this is Candace's loft. And uh, I, I, I cut off at the bottom right, Charles eating, spilling food with a napkin. And I just thought <laughs> I'd be human and not embarrass him, but it, uh, it's a wider picture. And uh, so good. It looked kind of crazy. It's, uh, yeah, very. We, we, we're young and enthusiastic and foolish. And then uh, upper left, uh, I'm there and my lovely wife is there. She was the office manager and I never gave her enough credit for all the work she did. Uh, Lindy, and how could she not conquer Bennett? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, infectious. Oh, <laughs> Mauricio and Candice. Mauricio was there all over. With hair? Yes. <laughs> and that's Melin talking to Ricardo Alvarez. Yeah, that's Eduardo and Lily's office. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. That was at the charter, right? Uh-huh. Yes, that was the yeah. first meeting. And we had a, a Japanese artist exhibit that day. Yeah. So it's mm. interesting that no, no photos have appeared of the meeting at Visual Asylum. 
still waiting. <laughs> well, and what's interesting, um, this photo down in the lower left with Bennett just in hysterics with Rafa. Yeah. Those, those, the artwork hanging behind them is yeah. hanging on the wall right here. We oh, oh that's cool. awesome. How cool is that? Yeah. You should have taken that chair home with you. <laughs> I, yeah. I'd forgotten that's where we got those. Oh. And then the, uh, Joanna, was it uh, just made these photos available to us a day or two ago, and I, I was just floored. And so there's that ladder. Uh, and so now we're going to have to find that, find somebody who's going to go up the ladder. Well, you hope. <laughs> and uh, I'm, that door uh, leaning there, it was Muriel Graphico's entry. And so it's uh, this interesting thing that happened. Oops, uh, Joanna. Joanna. I forgot about the buckets, the whole system that I put together in the, the exhibit. And this is so clever and creative. It's so Probably cool. Ended up with a lot of buckets. And that's the show asylum space. Yep. Before it got. Uh, uh, before it evolved by everybody yep. else's contributions. Let's see, Dalia, who uh, also came through with some amazing photos. Of, uh, later. I thought she, she was going to be here too this evening. Yeah. So um, like, we'll just have to do it again. That's Rafa's piece. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oops. Uh, again, Giovanna. And then Eduardo and Terry Master. I remember they both sort of took charge of devising the system, but it might be short uh, shorting some other people. Yikes. <laughs> so I had no idea. This is, this is the installation in La Jolla near the museum, I assume, for the, for the White Conference. And I, I forgot that as well, that we have, uh, that we had to show in those two locations. And uh, I'm looking at the wall, and I, there's a piece I don't remember seeing being scanned. So maybe we missed it. Go ahead. I didn't remember that, but we exhibited the art. Yes. In La Jolla also. Yes. Yeah, at the at the La Jolla Museum. Yeah. The La Jolla Museum of Art. I don't remember, I don't remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And they uh, gave us a room. Wow. Yeah, I remember. Yes. And uh, so there's. Uh, at the bottom is Sandra Kihua. <clears throat> um, <laughs> before she got famous. Yeah, you know they've got uh, what's the name of the movie coming? The, the next movie coming out? Yeah, that's a, I and the amazing, three. Amazing. Yeah. Work, you know. yeah. Wow. And, and I did not mean to diminish her accomplishments by making it about fame. She's absolutely talented and deserves every accolade she's getting with her husband. And uh, I just thought that we needed to not just go to the art itself, but here's that piece that uh, played such an important role. And I thought it'd be neat to see the actual playfulness of the piece. And, um, it's I, still so I, cool. I would unfold it and we actually had a mini call for entries to create the icons. <laughs> and so people have asked me, well, what was your piece? And I, I, I suffered thinking that I had to create a piece and trying to make time to make a piece. And at the end of the day, I was at peace with the event was my piece. But, <laughs> but that was my icon there with the two people on top of each other making an eye. The, 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 before I in the West to have an eye be part of the eye. And uh, that's, uh, I don't know who did the one on top, the, the middle one is Steve Morris, the one on the bottom is much other guy. Uh, the one on top is mine. Oh, <laughs> awesome. awesome. The hand, ah. the eye. It was a cliche to, to use a hand and an eye. Well, I, I, at the end, we, we went for the cliche of the, using the hand and eye, but, and well, what was that? We all did cliches. That's all we do. 
PPT. I, 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 I. That's Omar. <laughs> I, I, I. Then he does. I, and then I like this little cluster because he was sort of the, the one area where we sort of formalize the brand of Contacto EIJ San Diego, Baja California, and San Francisco. Oh, so cool. And that was, I think uh, Juan was very involved with getting this printed and the logistics. It was a, a very complex, very tough work to produce. We found out at the, in the middle of the process that the craft paper couldn't be printed offset and it had to be printed. So screening, and I kept going back to mail in and say, We need more money, we need more money, we need more money. <laughs> okay, 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 go spend it. <laughs> and uh, beautiful vellum envelope with this uh, intricate uh, invitation, which apparently mm -hmm. well, because so many people attend. So glad that we get that <laughs> produced, right? It was, the printing was donated by a print shop, I believe, in Ensenada. Uh, but because they were donating, they did not do the, they didn't put us on the top of the, <laughs> of the list. So it was a bit late, as things tend to be. Okay. It has stand the test of time. Yes. Yes. Still be with the printing. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it was, it was just a great piece. And I believe I have another one and hopefully uh, it's 6.39, we have 20 minutes. Uh, uh -huh. Let's see if I can be a bit more. <clears throat> I was trying to send this to Jorge because he knows what to do much better than I, but uh, it's so big that it didn't transfer. So now I'm the technical guy and <laughs> not doing a lot of things and none of them well. Uh, let's see. Is it real? <laughs> Somebody knows what, what I should be doing. <laughs> uh, it's not me i'll tell you that ah uh, no, no. <laughs> that was not it <laughs> uh, there we go beautiful piece it was so cool to see the the, the creation of it in the video and sketches Theater, mm. gorgeous, the most beautiful barbed wire you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I was looking at this uh, in Photoshop enlarging, and there's such amazing things in each one of those scribbles <laughs> and the pieces and the tiles. So much to rescue there. That's the other side. People I think there. that was in storage for a long time. And yeah, I was going to ask, where is that, Maylene? Still have it? I, we don't have it. I don't know. Wasn't it in AIGA storage for a while? Yeah, I remember seeing it in storage, but I just don't see how they made it this way. But I absolutely don't know. They could very well be in some storage unit somewhere, but I don't know. Jorge Thank will, goodness for Jorge the photos. Jorge will find out. <laughs> I'm on it. Omar. And so all of these are so profound, and it's just, not, you know, we don't do them justice. They, we, they, the text in them and the the way they're put together, obviously special, but I, I don't want to pretend to interpret for the artist. We're going to have to find out who did it and maybe 
we lost all of the plates that were filled up with the information about the pieces and what they meant. Um, this, is, I think, is Steve Morris. And uh, the spine is contacted. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I don't know who did this. Molina, it says that. And I did not clean up anything. I did not trim anything. I did not crop anything. This is how, how they came from transparencies. And, uh, I did not put them in any specific order. So I don't want to make any claims about what's better or not. I think it's all amazing. This one, I think, lights up at the point of the fingers of the hand. There's a button there and there's some LED lights. And of course, when we the things contact the light, what that comes to mind by the interpretation of this. I overlooked so many of these when I was those days. And I just think they're so amazing. Have you had the mind? It's a way to cross borders. Charles. <laughs> How are we doing with time? Good. Well, oh. so that's embroidered. Wow. That, that was done by Francisco Gutierrez and now. I mean, we could just write essays about this stuff. Yeah. To the indigenous peoples facing each other. But they all have the color of the institutionalized something. And this piece, my God. Who is that? I think was, that's uh, German. German. German Araujo. Araujo. I think so. And he was Again, a I, Let me take a picture of it and I can show it to him. I yeah, think he I did it. Yeah. Oh, he was going to be tonight too. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, he said that he couldn't, but he wanted to. So, but he had a meeting or something. Oh, yeah. We wanted to. So, we have to reconnect with him. He was a student back then. And he was known. That is so cool. It's one of those pictures. It could be in a museum. So I think my photographer was fascinated with it. So he just kept taking photos of it. <laughs> Second appearance of Michael Andrew. Jorge Contreras. Fascinating. It's a beer mug on top, I'm guessing. No, I don't know. Just, that's what I choose to make it. It's this USA and MX. Of course. When I was teach when I'm teaching, I give my students a rule, don't use brush strip. And <laughs> somebody managed to do it beautifully with brush strip. It's just a bias of mine. Hopefully nobody will. <laughs> my first job, my boss had made me use it until I was sick of it. <laughs> Both symbolic uh, representations of talk balloons from the freeze panic and vernacular, yes. And then they did 3D. Wow. Oh. The electrical contact. That says breaking the barriers. That's I remember that piece. Yeah. I think that's me. Yeah. I think so. I, I, I was wondering why there's two different ones. 
maybe you printed another one for the next show. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember even seeing it, doing it. <laughs> <laughs> From, yeah, may, uh, let me take a picture. I think so. Absolutely. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the high resolution uh, JPEG once we. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. But yeah, <laughs> take a screen. That that's the piece that inspired Bennett and Lily. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only piece that I can see that's not complete in the picture. So it just summons me, but uh, Go ahead. I, I, I hope nobody threw that one away. Yeah. Um, that was actually our piece. It yeah. was a nice piece. From the chart. Yeah. I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so now we know who to ask. Yeah. So yeah, the material is amazing. And, uh, I don't know who did that. And there's a photo bomb there, the first one ever. Uh, that piece is in the mirror in the back of the. Yeah. So I believe that's gone. Dave Blank. Dave Blank. Okay. <laughs> no, you did that. You did the panels. Right? I'm not sure if I have one here. <laughs> That's so cool. One. My goodness. Beautiful. It's a Batmobile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If I enlarge that, it looks like a kitchen. Maybe. Is that you, Scott Ramsey? No, that's not mine. It's coming. I like it though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they treated I'll take credit them. for it. <laughs> <laughs> I like how they treated the words. Uh, it's, it's hard to make them fun. Yeah. The great Dan Renner. Oh, hey. Try to find it. Dan, does, does, does he have an email address? What is his email address? Yeah, he does. In fact, he was over at the house yesterday, so we're always oh, in touch. I want to reconnect with Dan. Yeah. It's a good guy. So that's a piñata in the, the, on the, on the bottom of this uh, display is candy wrapped with uh, words that he uh, it says tango, mm. it says contacto. It's, uh, so everybody has this really profound things to say. But that may be a graphical piece. Mm. One of the panels is a, one of the different uh, Senses, vision, yeah. hearing, touch, speech, and the words in the name and welcome on both sides of the world. That's mine. That's you. Oh, yeah. yeah. That quote is cool. It's great. Oh, thank, thank you. I have that somewhere. It's wrapped up and tucked away somewhere. Oh, I, rem I remember uh, making that paper getting some pulp and then figuring out a way to flatten it so i put it behind the wheel of my car <laughs> anyway long story but it, it's, it's here somewhere nice. nice there's a logo there too so beautiful and there's you know, it doesn't have to be easy it doesn't have to be palatable it's controversial it's it's raw it's Real. Okay. 
phone number. Oh. This was that? Dave phone number? Oh, nice. And that's, uh, it's the only image where I saw the actual, the, the explanation for the piece of art. Mm. Uh, he is, uh, was always clever, uh, although he doesn't, yeah. this is, he doesn't necessarily, uh, it's writing is not, oh, well, no, that's what I get for trying to do what I'm not supposed to. I'm thinking Jim Krauss, but I don't know. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. Somebody put my awkward words up there, so I thought that was just too nice. One of them, regardless of real or perceived barriers, we share a common passion for design as a profession and a way of life. Yes. Jose Serrano, simple but direct. We're in it together. There is a barbed wire, but it's not in between us. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. And I think that might be it. Awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Thank, thank goodness for, for Max holding on to his binder for one thing, AIJ binder, everyone else threw away. <laughs> and for <laughs> keeping a box of Diana did not approve. <laughs> so I think, I mean, we're we're closing in on our time. I don't know if they'll shut us off right at seven or not, but um, so the go forward strategy, really, we wanted to gauge, obviously reconnect with all of you guys and to introduce the idea to those folks who might be interested in watching this. Um, to just see what we might, what, what the interest level is to um, work together on some sort of celebration in 2022, whatever that looks like. And so maybe just a show of hands, how many people would be interested in participating in that and or planning or somehow being involved, show of hands. Because it's gonna start Great. with good times first, right? Good times. Good times. <laughs> Yeah, good times. Lots of drinking as per the first go round. <laughs> and tacos. Okay, so we'll just uh, we'll keep in touch with you all and um, look forward to arranging get together, whether they're Zoom or in person, hopefully soon, um, to further the conversation. I think some of the key things that came up right out of the shoot went right for where we were thinking. Uh, might make sense have a really, you know, potentially deeper conversation about the border issues. And uh, after Max spent some time sort of diving into the content that we looked at in 1997, it seems like a lot of those same questions are relevant as relevant today as they were back then. And so anyway, we're thinking that it just might be a great time for us as a design community, you know, without border, um, to really dive deeper and see, you know, what the potential is for this particular group of folks um, to work on, uh, whether or not we win the bid for world design capital, irregardless of that designation. We feel like, you know, this work that we did together 25 years ago is so important and relevant and we'd like to pass the torch along and light the fire underneath some other you know some younger folks to carry it forward and so i think that's where we hope this conversation continues and that we have some kind of a huge party in 2022 to celebrate all of this so also just uh one last thing if you could if you know if you have any, so this is pre-digital photographs, right? So these are transparencies and or, you know, those things, actual printed photographs. 
and any memorabilia that you have from the time, if you want to just, you know, search that out, find it, um, and have it at the ready for when we reconvene. Um, we'll just stay in touch with you if that's okay. Thank you, everybody. Great. Nice to see you. It's nice to find that you're still interested and we'll be in touch. All right. You're here. Happy Kung Tacto. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Nice to see you, everybody. Thank you for Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Take good care. Bye. Bye. Bye.